Hi, this clip um, is to illustrate how to do trace tables as in um, M150. Um, so not to be confused with my other clip which is an MT264 trace table which is done in a slightly different way. Um, so I've got um, an instruction list here and basically what this um, little program does is um, it prompts the user for two values and then it's going to sum up those values. So for example um, if they put in value 2 and value 6 then what you end up with is your total is 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 okay um, similarly if you've got um, 1 to 10 it'll add up all the numbers from 1 inclusive through to less than 10 um, so that's going to be my sort of sample piece of code um, that I'm going to use but obviously this applies to, to um, pretty much anything so first thing to do when you're going to do a trace table is to number your lines of code. So you only number the executable lines. As you can see, I've got blank lines in there. But in that they don't do anything, you don't include those. Um, the very first thing to do to include in your trace table is your start values. Um, now, some of these may have values. For example, if you've got um, an output um, line for example then that that's likely to be one at the start generally things are going to be um, aren't going to be initialized anything at the start when you do your traces and then basically what we need to do is we need to walk through the code line by line for the inputs we're given so in this example I'm doing it for um, inputs of two and six so when line one is executed it reads in value one so we know we're, we're using two for our value one here and as you can see on the right hand side there, we update the values in our trace table to show what's changed. The question marks indicate that the values are not yet known. So on line 1 we read in value 1, which is going to be initialized to 2. The next thing we do, so on line 2, so we enter 2 in the line column, we're going to read in value 2. Now we've defined this is going to be 6 as our second input value. So again value 1 less than value 2 is going to be there as undefined even though we could work it out for ourselves as being true um, but it's not yet been evaluated so we leave that as undefined as yet. Next line to execute is line 3 which just um, initializes the value of total to 0. So as you can see we leave value 1 and value 2 blank to indicate that they're not changed on this line. Um, and the total value goes to zero. The next line that's executed is the fourth line, which says that while value one is less than value two, we're going to keep doing something. So the only thing that's evaluated on this line is value one less than two. Now we know that value one is two, and that value two is six, so we know that two is less than six, so this value is going to be true. As before, nothing else has changed, so they've got blank values in our trace table. So how a while loop works is um, it keeps on executing the lines that are indented within it. So um, we've got a conditional statement here that does something to total and does something to value 1. Those lines, so lines 5 and 6, will keep executing for as long as the condition is true in the while loop. So for as long as value 1 is less than value 2. So we know that value 1 is less than value 2 here. Um, so we know that the next line to execute is going to be line 5. And what line 5 does is it takes what our total is. So prior to line 5 it was 0 because we initialized it in line 3. And it adds the current value of the variable value 1 which we know is currently 2. So we can update in our trace table the value of total is now 2 after line 5 is executed. The next line that is executed is number 6 and all that does is adds 1 to value 1. So as you can see in the table you've got line 6 is executing, value 1 goes to 3, everything else is unchanged. And then what happens because this is a loop is it comes back up to line 4. So do note in the trace table that it's line 4 here and not 7 even though it's the seventh thing that is executing. So it's the number in the code. Um, again this part of the while loop all that we have is value 1 less than value 2. So we know that value 1 is 3. You just look up in your trace table to the last possible line where it was set. And we know that value 2 is 6. That remains unchanged for the duration of this program. So we know value 1 less than value 2 is true. So that's our next line in the table. Because that's true, it steps into the loop. So the next line that we execute is 5. And line 5 says that the total equals the previous total, which we know was 2 
because if we look up our trace table then the last time it was changed was when it was updated to 2 and then we add value 1 to it and again we look up our trace table we know that value 1 is currently 3 so we know that the total has been updated to the previous total which is 2 plus value 1 which is 3 so the new total value is 5 so we need to record that in our trace table the next line to execute is going to be line 6 because it's part of the conditional while statement and you can tell it's a conditional statement because they're both indented to the same level. Um, so again all that does is increment value 1. We look up our trace table to find the last value of value 1 which is 3 and then we add 1 to it. So again we need to evaluate our while loop condition. So value 1 is now 4, it's still less than 6, so the value is true in our trace table. And note again that the line is 4 here, so we keep doing this while loop until the, um, the condition is false. So the condition is true, we know we step in, so total is the previous value of total, looking up on the right hand side that we know that's 5, and then we add on the current value of value 1, again looking up in, in the first column there, the, the, the value of, um, current value of value 1 is 4, so uh, we know that total is now 5 plus 4, which is 9, so that's how we update it in the trace table. Again, next line as before, in line 6 you just increment value 1, so you look up your trace table, we know it's 4 now, we're going to increment it to 5. As before, we need to check our while loop value. So value 1 is 5, it's still less than 6, which means we're going to loop. So we update it to true in our trace table, and we know that the next line is going to be line 5. So again, as before, the total is the previous total, looking up that's 9, plus the current value 1, which looking up that trace table is 5. So the new total is going to be 14. Next line executed, as we know, is going to be 6, and what that does is it increments value 1. So value 1 is now going to be set to 6. As you remember from before, we need to evaluate that while loop condition. So the next line we execute is going to be line 4. Now in this case, value 1 is 6 and value 2 is 6, so we know that value 1 is not less than value 2, they're equal. So this loop will no longer um, execute because it will only execute where all the condition is true. So we have line 4 in our trace table, which evaluates to false, and what that means is that the next line that is evaluated um, is line 7. Now I've included this as a blank line here because it doesn't actually update any of the values. Um, you could arguably um, put the values in for total here in that that's what's output. So the final value that is output here is 14. Um, so I hope that's relatively um, straightforward. Um, by leaving these blanks you can see the patterns in the loop. So in this case we went around the loop, um, we went around the loop three times. I think. Um, <laughs> we went around the loop uh, several times um, before we exited it. Um, so all trace tables, you just need to step by step go through line by line and update all the values within the table um, and just take it easy and you'll get there in the end. So I hope that was helpful, a little walkthrough of how to do it and hopefully you'll be able to apply this um, to your instruction list that, that you have. Um, Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was useful. Do let me know if there's anything else um, that you'd like.